Jay Bazy, your town supervisor, and today we're here at Arlington Sewer Treatment Plant. We're going to have a discussion, an educational program with Steve Segna from Suez. We'll tell us the do's and don'ts of the sewer plant, what the homeowner and the business can do to help us um, maintain our plant to be the most efficient possible and environmentally safe. I'm Steve Segna. I'm the project manager. Uh, here at the Arlington Treatment Plant. Uh, I work for Suez Environmental Corporation and uh, we have been operating and maintaining this facility since 2011. Uh, this is a four million gallon a day plant. Uh, it's a conventional wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we have a staff of eight people, including myself, uh, we, we operate 12 hours a day, every single day, 365 days a year. Uh, and our job is to maintain, uh, meet compliance, regulatory compliance. And today we'd like to take you on a short tour of the facility and we want to let people see the uh, new upgrades that were installed here in 2018 and the benefits of this new equipment um, and then we'd like to talk about uh, flushable wipes and things not to flush down the toilet and things that you can flush down the toilet. We're now inside the new Influent building. Uh, Influent is the wastewater stream that enters the plant. It enters the plant right over here through a channel on this side and travels through this piece of machinery. This is an automatic screener. Uh, this removes all rags, paper, plastic, any solids that are in the waste stream prior to entering the wet rest of the plant. This is the uh, automatic screening mechanism in our treatment plant, and we'd like to show you the material that we remove every single day on a continuous basis from the waste stream as it enters the plant. And I'd just like to show you uh, what we call rags, this material, and this machine will fill this hopper every single day. It's emptied every single day. So let me give you a, a look at this. And you can imagine what this stuff does to pumps uh, and all of our machinery in the plant. It clogs everything up, breaks equipment, and causes a lot of problems for the operation of the facility. On my right is part of our grit removal system, which is sand, gravel, small stones that come down the sewer lines and end up here in the plant. Okay, I'm gonna uh, turn this on. And you can see the dried and washed grit falling into the dumpster. We'll fill one of these dumpsters probably in two days with grit. And as you can see, there's quite a bit. And this also protects our equipment downstream. I'm standing over the top of uh, the Influent channel and directly below me is the last item or piece of machinery that's very important for our, our facility and that is our sonic flow meter. The flow meter uh, registers how much, how many gallons of, of flow come into the plant on a daily basis and it's very important for our uh, records. And 
now directly behind me you see our grit pad where our collection system team uh, deposits all the rags and grit and grease that is vacuumed and cleaned out of all the manholes, pump stations, and sewer lines, which there's over 100 miles in the town of Poughkeepsie. I believe we have over 40 pump stations. Uh, and this is where it comes. And you can see the dumpster is completely full of rags and paper and plastic. And I would like to stress very much that we would like to see just toilet paper being flushed down the toilet. No disposable, even though they say they're flushable wipes, they're not. Uh, the only real thing that you can flush is toilet paper. No paper towels, no sea fold towels. We're now standing at the head end of our primary clarifiers. These are uh, settling tanks and the flow of wastewater enters these tanks at this end and as it travels to the far end, uh, we settle out any solids that are in the waste stream and probably 50 to 60 percent of the solids are removed, settled to the bottom of these tanks and you see the devices along the top of the tank. These are collectors and they collect grease at the far end and they collect sludge at this end which is then pumped into the building next to us uh, for thickening. standing uh, in front of our biological tanks. We call them aeration tanks. Uh, and this is where the bacteria uh, is aerated. As you can see, the, we pump a lot of air in there to provide oxygen to the bacteria. And the waste stream comes into these tanks. And this bacteria actually does the job of eating or cleaning up that organic material that we all provide for. Uh, we're looking at the uh, V-notch wares at, at the end of our primary clarifiers, our settling tanks, and you can see that the flow goes over between the V-notches and into the troughs where it exits the tanks. The V-notches are there to provide an even and consistent flow throughout the process. We're now looking at the secondary clarifiers. These are our second set of settling tanks. Uh, the flow of wastewater after leaving the biological tanks enter these tanks. And as you can see, the, the sludge settles to the bottom. That sludge is collected in the middle of the tank here and sent back to the head of the plant. Or it is removed from the plant. Uh, this is a process that we have to watch very closely and ensure that we don't remove too much sludge or we remove too little sludge. Uh, this is called process control. As you can see beyond the secondary clarifiers, you can see our receiving stream, which is the mighty Hudson River. Um, after leaving these secondary tanks, uh, we disinfect the effluent, which is the water leaving the plant and going into the river, uh, with sodium hypochlorite, or the same as uh, Clorox bleach. Uh, only our hypochlorite is just a bit stronger. Um, we have several tanks at the lower end of the plant that hold the disinfected wastewater for a period of about uh, 30 minutes, so it gets an effective kill of the fecal coliform bacteria. And then from that point, uh, it flows down a pipe underneath uh, the railroad tracks and into the river. It's a uh, 
3,000 gallon bolt tank. Uh, and then we have a chlorination room down below where we have 90 gallon day tanks. And we have flow paste pumps, three pumps that pump the, the uh, chlorine into the, the uh, effluent stream. I just wanted to talk a little bit about our regulatory requirements. Um, all sewer plants have a regulatory permit uh, which requires us to limit how much we can release into the Hudson River or any receiving stream and the way that we regulate that ourselves is by testing and we are required to test the wastewater stream incoming to the plant and leaving the plant and we, we are required to do this twice a day every day 365 days a year we are also required to do a weekly tests that go out to an accredited outside lab and this is every week 52 weeks a year and if there are any non-compliance events we are required to report that to the New York State DEC which is our re regulatory agency and if that does happen Thankfully, it doesn't happen a great deal. We are required to come up with an action plan to fix the situation and make everything uh, meet the permit requirements. I want to thank everybody again today for um, watching this um, video and participating in the educational process of how sewer is processed, how we try to keep it environmentally safe and you can't stress enough the importance of toilet paper only down the sewer. It wreaks havoc with the system as you learned today. Thank you for spending time with us and be safe.